Greetings, folks, friends, and fight fans. Welcome to the uh, debut episode of the latest show on the MMA Fighting Podcast Network. We call This Is Cinema. Uh, this is your host, Alexander Cayley. I am beyond thrilled to be here for what we hope will be uh, the premier podcast when it comes to discussing movies that feature an emphasis on the mixing of the martial arts. That means a focus on films where fighting is essential to the plot, whether it's a story that revolves around professional combat sports, uh, where the principal characters are defined by martial arts background, or just a good old fashioned rock'em sock'em action romp with a handful of UFC stars sprinkled in. There's plenty of ground to cover, and cover it we shall. Now with this goal in mind, I could not possibly ask for a finer, more qualified pair of co-hosts. First, let me introduce an esteemed member of the MMA media who is known to never back down, no matter how hot the take. It's your friend and mine, Jed Mishu. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here. We have been talking about this show for so long. I am so excited. I'm mostly excited because AK just said never back down, which is the reason for my being. But we'll get to that later. You all know why we're here. But before we get to that, back to you, AK, because we've got we've got one more troubadour on us with us on yes, this journey. I think I think just looking at us, Jen, and when they look at our our other uh, another co host, they'll have an idea of why we're here exactly. Uh, joining us, my former Tough Hand co host, an undefeated fighter and a producer, often considered to be the best of the best in this crazy industry. It's E. Casey Lydon. I am so happy to be here. You know what? Here comes the boom, baby. Let's talk about Road House. We are here. That's right. We are here to talk just, about. Can we slip in a whole bunch of fight movie references? I mean, they're going to be a different one just every a, week. Just some warriors you, out here in the digital <laughs> space. A, a real warrior. A real Jim Cotta of a man. Uh, e. Casey Lyden. Uh, yes, guys, we are here to talk about movies, and this week specifically, we are here to talk about Road House, the 2024 uh, remake? Mix? Reimagining? I, I'm not sure. I can't remember how they're billing it. It shares the same retelling. title of the uh, 1989. They're, t- they're billing it as retelling. retelling. Really? Yeah. I'm not sure. That I haven't seen the original, and I'm not sure that that's it's, accurate. Uh, it's not accurate at all. <laughs> <laughs> a revisioning of the 1989 Rowdy Hampton film starring Patrick Swayze, Kelly Lynch, and of course, Sam Elliott. Uh, playing our punchy protagonist this time around is Academy Award nominee Jake Gyllenhaal, who takes on the Dalton name. Uh, this time he is he is uh, Elwood Dalton, not James Dalton, the original character. And he takes his uh, shockingly impressive physique from the UFC octagon all the way to a fictional island in the Florida Keys. Guys, I didn't know if this wasn't a real place. Uh, Glass Key. And it's in Glass Key where he goes to make some quick cash, befriend a charming guest of Mythfists, and uh, eventually cross sword with a rogues gallery, captained by none other than the brutish Knox, a.k.a. the notorious Conor McGregor. First things, uh, I got to ask real quick, who here has seen the original? Because I haven't, or if I have, I don't remember any of it. Jed, I don't know if you've uh, you've watched it. Yes? I have watched it. You yeah. both have. I have seen the original. I, I watched it as far as, as part of my research. Wait, Casey, was any- that the first Casey, was that the first time you watched it was part of your research or had you seen it before? I watched it years ago, but I just had no no real memory of it. Kind of just vague memories of it. So I kind of needed to kind of bring it back and everything kind of came back once I saw it again. But um but I actually like the fact that AK didn't watch it. So cuz that's a that's a that's more of a unique view because I feel like my impressions of the first the memories of the first film can kind of, you know, I don't know, um, change my expectations for the for the reimagining of this one. So I'm glad AK hadn't seen it. I, I, I was AK told to go it. in fresh. Yeah, I was told to go in fresh. I was instructed to go in fresh. Uh, the original Roadhouse has been staring at me from Amazon Prime, the very streaming network, which is also, uh, of course, promoting and, and distributing the new Roadhouse. But I resisted. And I love Patrick Swayze. I love Sam Elliott. I love a lot of the actors involved in that original movie. But I guys, I held back. I resisted. Uh, We should tell people now, with that kind of little synopsis out of the way, spoilers galore. Guys, spoiler warning going forward. If you have – the movie uh, came out the week that we were recording this. And uh, if you have not seen it yet and you don't want any of this intricate, detailed, topsy-turvy plot spoiled for you, we will tell you now to uh, go go watch the movie. Go go check it out. Flip it on. 
and then uh, and come back, come back and listen to us. Or if you don't care and you love spoilers and you and if anything, we're saving you from watching the movie. Definitely stay tuned in. <laughs> uh, Jed, I'm gonna go to you first. Let's get a quick. I don't know how you want to do this. Tweet length review, elevator pitch, but just give us a really quick version of your initial thoughts uh, after watching Roadhouse 2024. You guys want to see what Conor McGregor would look like if he had superpowers? Because that's pretty much the the basis of this film for me, is what if Conor McGregor was a supervillain? And all the hijinks would surround that. So that's that's my elevator pitch, AK. It's a strong pitch, and I think it's how a lot of people are kind of being sold on this movie. Uh, maybe I'm maybe I'm only speaking for our fight audience. I I, I have no uh, guys. I have uh, I am in the bubble. Like I just have no grasp of how much the average non MMA watching person like what their interest in this movie would be. We don't want to delve too much too much into it. There is some drama involving like the distribution. Uh, the director Doug Lyman thought it was going to be released like you know in theaters like a normal action film with this with a, a, a high profile actor like Jake Gyllenhaal. But there was some transfer of studio rights, and so it is only on Amazon Prime. Uh, a lot of drama here. Casey, ignoring all that for now, what was your first impression just sort of viewing the film the first time? My my first impression is it's a film that knows what it is. It's it's meant to be fun. It is just it's just to be a fun action film. And Conor McGregor has one heck of a bottom. Man. He that that man does not skip leg day. I yeah, it was great. It was fantastic. I'm glad you, Casey. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah. Did, 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 did I spoil it? Is that a spoil, spoiler? No, spoiler. No, yeah, yeah. No. That's the perfect. That's the perfect <laughs> comment for this stage of our show because again, as Jed mentioned, we are going to give you our subjective review at some point. Of course, you you will really get uh, you know bits of our opinion as we discuss the film. But right now, we want to keep things scientific. This is a scientific discussion again of cinema. C I N E M M A, right? As we all know, cinema is spelled. So we are trying to keep things just the facts, just the components of the film. And Conor McGregor's rear end is objectively solid. 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 I just want to say, I did not think either of those two things that Casey just said. So we're in for a great show because I think he and I may have viewed this film yeah. entirely differently. How are you noticing his rear end? I was noticing the traps. The man was walking around like a cobra. Every second the camera's on him, he is flexing his traps like this, yes. like awkwardly, like puffed up like a puffer fish. Like it's there was, so weird. There was one scene when he, when he, when Connor had the, or what's his name in the movie? Knox. Knox. You can, How Knox. can you forget that? Knox. Let's make when it Knox, here on this show. When Knox had it, when Knox had to look at something to the le- to the left, he goes like this. Yeah. <laughs> He is just what? in this pose at all points in time. Oh, it, was like, it was so weird. Like I didn't even notice his ass. Maybe he has a great ass. I just oh. I was distracted by the traps. So you're I you're mean, a trap you're a trap man. I'm an ass man. That's all. That's all. We, we, we're, we're, we're finding out so much about each other. By the way, <laughs> by the way, let's make it clear. We're on three the show. minutes into this show. <laughs> oh, it's uh, we've only just begun. Let's make it clear on the show. By the way, that. Uh, when we we're going to be watching several martial arts related films that feature like UFC actors, mixed martial artists, and I feel it's fair game for us to just call them by their real life. Like, if you want to call refer to Conor McGregor as Knox in this film, have that. It. I will probably be calling him Conor several times. We will be watching movies later with like Randy Couture in it, and Chuck Liddell, and listen, I can't be bothered to remember that Chuck Liddell's name is like oh Sergeant. Uh, Troy Hendricks or whatever. No, I'll just be calling him Chuck. I'll be calling him Chuck in his movies. Let's. We. I think we all will. So Knox, Connor, whatever you want to do. Right. Uh, that's how we're gonna roll. Guys, let's get back to the science a little bit here. <laughs> the we plan to lead off. The structure will be a little different every week, but I think almost every episode we're going to lead off with the first, uh, most important, and probably most grammatically incorrect question of the show: How much MMA, guys? How much MMA is the movie? So uh, we, we we went back and forth uh, in our planning for this about how, what kind of system is here. Do you give it a letter grade? Do you give it one to ten? And I think we settled on appropriately enough, a belt system. Uh, we don't need to delve into exactly like the range of belts, but I think most fight fans are familiar. You know, white belt is probably pretty low end. Means this uh, 
the movie we're discussing doesn't have too much mixed martial arts content. And if you're a black belt, then we're talking about a movie that is like primarily about fighting. It's very likely about a fighting tournament. It is about professional combat sports. So that would be a black belt film. Uh, I'm very interested to hear how you guys classified Roadhouse because uh, I don't think we're going to be on the same page as this one. Uh, Jed, do you want to go first? What what belts do you award Roadhouse for its uh, martial arts acumen? I gave it a brown belt. Um, I don't think it rises to the level of black belt because this is not a this, this really is not a movie about MMA. I'm honestly not entirely sure what the film is about. We'll get into that. It's one of my quibbles with with the film in general. Um, is what is its purpose? But its purpose is pretty clearly not MMA. That being said, the the primary theme of it is MMA. Uh, Dalton, the Jake Gyllenhaal main character, I think his name is James Dalton, but maybe it's Elwood. It's Elwood El- Dalton. Elwood. James Dalton is the original Dalton. Elwood Dalton is a former UFC fighter. Uh, Conor McGregor is the heavy in this film. There are multiple fight scenes where, honestly, less MMA moves are involved than I would have thought, but still some of that. So there's MMA running all through it, but I don't – if you swapped that out, it wouldn't change the movie. If if Elwood Dalton was a glory kickboxer, it wouldn't fundamentally change this film in any way. So I don't think it can rise to the level of black belt, but because it is so part of the narrative, both – both in and outside of the film, right? It is part of the in-film narrative, the diegetic narrative, and the non-diegetic narrative of, hey, this is Conor McGregor acting. So uh, I gave it a brown belt. Uh, Kate, I, I don't agree. I don't agree. But I want to go to see if, if Casey is with you first, and, and then I may have to defend my position against the both of you. So Casey, did you go as high as brown belt for this one? No, I demoted it. Um, I, I'm giving it a a one-stripe purple belt. Ah. Um mostly because of the fight scenes. The uh, fight scenes just didn't have enough com- more didn't have enough mixing of the martial arts for me to give it uh anything higher than a purple belt. Um the fact that ov- obviously Elwood comes from the uh UFC he's the his backstory is a UFC fighter, you know, we'll get into that later. And but after that, all the fight scenes like 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 Jed said, he could have been a kickboxer. He could have been a boxer. It was more just, you know, just throwing haymakers and a lot of judo tosses and things like that. There was very, I think I saw maybe two actual MMA, uh, sorry, um, jujitsu you know, grappling moves, a little bit of wrestling, but um, overall, it was it was heavy on the hands. So uh, and not a lot of good knees, a lot of good knees actually. So a little bit Excuse no elbows. Me, I don't sir. Think. You saw Conor oh. McGregor shoot the cleanest double of his life in this film. A couple of times. A couple <laughs> yeah. of times. Like, well, okay. just, so, I mean, talk no, about no, him no, turning no. the corner, the lift and drive through to, to truck Dalton off the steps of the roadhouse into the parking lot. That's the cleanest double that man's ever going to get. But then, he, but then did he let him up? Did, did, did they continue with the ground fighting? I mean, I, I saw, I saw no Imanari rolls. I saw no hill hooks and nothing. <laughs> If, if if your gauge of black belt level is yeah. how many Imanari rolls are in the oh film, dude there if, are no if, black belt movies if if do you, if Dalton when like on that boat when have gone for Imanari roll and just snapped the dude's knee that would have been insane I'd be like oh okay brown belt yeah okay, I'm just saying no that's a, an Imanari roll gets you a brown belt okay Tough so brown. I I have <laughs> high standards I have high I standards. Am- I am mostly with you. I think I think I'll go purple belts, no stripe. Uh, oh, uh, oh Jen, and Lord. I could not go. Yeah, I could not go. So while, so I agree. There's there's clearly MMA content. In this movie. It is essential to the main character's background, as we we've said. He's a disgraced UFC fighter, uh, and you know who has now been uh, reduced to playing bouncer at uh, the Roadhouse. Uh, but he's really the only MMA character. There's kind of some bare knuckle boxing in there as well. We've got uh, I think his name's Carter. He's- Carter something uh, played by just an offshoot. Yeah, we'll just call him Post Malone. Po- Post oh, Malone yeah, Post is the Malone. beginning of this movie. That's, that's yes, and Malone. he's doing some sort of bare knuckle boxing. It appears, uh, but we really only have one character who is explicitly from an MMA background. You can draw your conclusions about uh, Conor McGregor's character Knox. Uh, clearly, he is you know a UFC star in real life, but we don't know if he's actually like this formally trained fighter. He seems quite rough around the edges, uh, a bit of a street brawler. So I think this film really only has one. MMA fighter. So I'm setting my criteria now. I think I'm saving my black belt and higher 
uh, award for movies that have more than one f- like professional fighter character. So I, I don't know. I don't know if people agree with this, but go, oh, Jack, you want to say that? disrespect? The disrespect to Jax Harris, aka Jay Huron, UFC uh-huh. middleweight champion. He's as see, if he is not a character in the film. That's the next thing I was going to bring up. Is there is also an actual UFC fight in the movie, and we kind of get it in pieces. I, I thought this was a smart idea, by the way, that we didn't just get one big flashback scene. We get uh, several sort of traumatic dreams, uh, flashbacks for Jake Gyllenhaal's character. Boat dreams. Boat dreams. Fucking boat, boat dreams. <laughs> quote, quote, boat quote, dreams. Quote, <laughs> Spoiler. Fucking boat dreams, yeah. <laughs> Fucking great line. That, I, I hope that was improvised because that was fantastic. Uh, I can't stand when I have a fucking boat dream. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, but yes, uh, we'll, we'll, it was to improvised because to give good. a little more to give a little more of the plot, and we have to t- talk about these flashback scenes more. But I don't want to dive into it now. Uh, he is disgraced for uh, punching an opponent after having knocked him out. The opponent played by, of course, Jay Heron. And uh, that is apparently his last UFC fight. He was clearly either, you know, released, fired, disgraced. He cannot go into professional fighting anymore. But that scene is actually like, is actually pretty short. I think if you add up all the times, like if you if you spliced all the scenes together, it's like not longer than maybe ninety seconds of UFC fight footage. So again, that kind of takes away from the amount of uh, MMA is in this movie. And uh, Casey, I think the most important thing you mentioned. There's just not that many MMA moves. The, the blast double is great, but that's – listen, to the naked eye, that's a tackle. That's a tackle that we see in nine out of ten action films, one character Perfect versus another. Technique. Yeah. The, the technique is definitely more advanced than that. I, I do think you're right. I do think there was an intention to show, oh, this guy knows how to do a real proper take. This is not a blind running football tackle. This, yeah. this, is, this is a double leg. This is a blast double. Uh, but it's not quite enough yeah. for me. So I'm, if, if he would chain the takedowns at once, no, he gone for a single, then he gets stuffed, then he goes for the double, then he switches to high crotch, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'll be like, oh. That would be... <laughs> It's not Knox's fault. <laughs> it's not Knox's fault they don't takes- allow golf clubs in the octagon, okay? Yeah. This is... This is absolute nonsense from y'all. There's, uh, there's also a uh, a classic <laughs> rear naked choke in there. Uh, but again, that is literally every action movie. that, that Especially hey, today, I look, think you see... I, this is in my notes. I have a whole ton of notes as we get into stuff. But look, say what you will. There are a lot of crit- critiques, criticisms. The RNC scene is like the one time I've ever seen in any movie where somebody gets out of that legitimately and not just like, I'm going to run him into the wall and he will magically let go of my neck. He gets his hip down to the mat, gets out and gets like out in an actual BJJ escape. I don't know what. Oh, that's untrue. I'm very clear what parts of this film Connor contributed. Am I? I assume that he was <laughs> he was part of that. I have no – there is no way Elwood did not throw those hooks. I don't know why he didn't put his hooks in. They were right there for him to put the hooks in, and he just chose not to. It makes no sense. He had the but, hooks in. He no, had the hooks in. But he did, but he lost the under. He lost the underhook, which is the hook that matters. Having the overhook doesn't matter. He lost the one on the ground. Connor got his hip down, got out and escaped. It was that was good BJJ. It was good fighting. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Again, I think so. We're we're between purple and brown. None of, none of us thought this was a black belt uh, MMA movie as far as actual martial arts content. If we were do it, if we were to do a strict yes or no answer, and someone asked me, "Is this a martial arts film?" I would firmly say no. A martial oh. arts film. Yes. Well, yeah, martial arts film, I would say no, but is it okay. a UFC, like, is it an MMA film? I would firmly say yes. Interesting. I'll go. That's the thing. I, I mean, this. there were scenes in the octagon, so I would say yes. Yeah. Okay. Also, okay. I'm more importantly, and this gets back to, like, I think I'm going to hit on this point a lot through this show, right? Genuinely, the to the best of my reckoning, Like, I'll just ask you, what is the point of this film? Because to me, the point of this film, as I watched it and as I rewatched part of it today as well, before we did this, uh, this movie is a vehicle for Conor McGregor. Now, that has, we'll talk about whether that's a good idea or a bad idea, but like, the purpose of this film is Conor McGregor, as far as my viewing experience really came down to, which I think just fundamentally makes it an MMA movie. And like, that's, that's why I, oh. I'm at Brown. Like I, oh, if you if you pull Connor out of this movie, I just don't know that it's certainly we wouldn't be doing a show about it, obviously. But like, we'll talk about his performance. I'm not trying to spoil that part of it. But if you oh, remove him worry. from this film, I don't think this film is meaningful in any significant way. 
his presence is the part of the movie that that makes it to the extent that it works work uh and so i think that this is like to me this is the most obvious mma movie like of all time other than warrior <laughs> which is explicitly a ufc film or whatever uh now he does not show up in this movie until I want to say a little less than an hour in. Is my timing off there? Do you guys remember when? Do you guys no, time no, that's about right. Up? Yeah, all right. And I think that's fine. He kind of does a change of pace to the film. He obviously follows the uh, happy montage. Uh, Elwood Dalton has found a home in the roadhouse, and everyone's getting along. And he's training the staff to to be better people and be better bouncers and give them self confidence. And the good times are rolling, and then. Uh, the big bad or the big bad's father anyway decides that they need to call in some special help they call in the mysterious Knox, and he shows up uh naked as a jaybird uh he is just he has just uh, slept with i believe an italian man's wife and or daughter i'm not sure and uh proceeds to parade naked into a marketplace steal a shirt just a shirt oh just a blazer excuse me blazer just a blazer just a blazer and uh and like a kimono Yes, and very much so. And then set the marketplace on fire and march off. It's quite the intro for the con man. Uh, what did you guys think? Let's try to, you know, we don't have to talk so much about the nudity. I think you had that covered, Casey. But generally, this character introduction for Knox and really the cinematic introduction of, of one Conor McGregor. Um, I, I agree a lot with uh, Jed said. This is seems to be uh, a, a coming out party for Conor McGregor has a action star. Um he was great. He's definitely one of the, I yeah probably I was yeah probably the better but maybe the best part of the film, um, as far as the the, the supporting characters. Um, yeah, great intro, uh, great traps, great tush. Um, yeah, uh, he looked apart. He looked apart, and uh, yeah, it, it worked. It, it, and since that too, congratulations to him and his agent for picking a role where. Basically, he's just playing a slight, slightly exaggerated version of himself. So uh, the acting, he didn't really have to expand his acting chops, but, you know, you still have to act. And he did a great job. It was there wasn't a scene where I felt I was I'm not not bored. But I felt like, oh, this is Conor McGregor acting like a like a like a thug or whatever. You know, it was great. Jed, uh, thoughts on the introduction in particular? Uh, you didn't seem to have a lot to say about uh, Connor's backside before, but if you'd like to wax poetic on that now, go ahead. And just, again, the general introduction of the character and, and how he was utilized. This is what I'm here for. I'm excited for this. Please. Because the buildup of this film, like when when it was, when was I saw that Doug Liman was directing this, I got a lot of respect for Doug Liman, right? Like I, I would not say that Doug Liman has made masterpieces in his career, but they have all been fun. I mean, the Born Identity is, I guess, arguably a masterpiece. But Mr. And Mrs. Smith um, is is fun. Jumper, Edge of Tomorrow, like those are fun, weird movies. And I was like, okay, this is definitely going to be weird. Jake Gyllenhaal, super weird guy. We're going to talk all about Jake Gyllenhaal being weird um, in this movie. And I was like, Connor can come in, and I've seen enough of Connor do commercial acting that this can work. And this probably won't be good, but it will be fun. Everyone this week has told me and various the people who've already seen it, people I respect, trust, and know, Connor's the best part of this movie. I think Connor's objectively the worst part of this film. Um, and the movie gets substantially worse once he appears. I I truly don't know what I was watching that other people were not. I thought he was awful, and it was real tough because – there were moments where he's not, right? There were glimpses. The intro, the exit, which we could talk about later, those were – I'm not going to say this a lot about this film. Those were well-written sets, right? Like the, here is our introduction to the heavy. So that's who Connor is going to be. That is actually a pretty good, well-written scene to create a heavy for this for a sort of campy B movie esque like, oh, this will be a fun guy if he could pull this off. And then Connor just can't quite get there for a number of reasons. I got a whole host of issues with other parts, but like that scene is, I would say, objectively his best scene, but for one line delivery later, and it's still. I watched it and was like, oh man, if they had somebody better in this role, this would be awesome. And instead it's just okay. Because at some point, like I don't know how deep we want to get into Connor's performance. Uh, it's all bad as far as I'm concerned, basically. And they they have to go back and, and dub 
almost all of his lines. Like, I don't know if you guys noticed that while watching it, but most of the stuff he said was not like his live filming stuff. He went back and did it in post because it is all over the place of the sound not quite being right. And it it's distracting and it's part of this, for, which is objectively, like I said, like a really fun little scene, a really fun intro. And he can't get it over the line because, I mean, that's not to blame him. He's not an actor. <laughs> um, but I, I did not think he worked in this movie. I, I think from the outset, I was like, this might be tough. It got a lot worse uh, as it continued on, and, and he just never landed the role. Yeah, I'm I'm a lot with you, Jet. Maybe it's because people built it up. Uh, I thought some, the, the the one thing I wrote because I knew I was going to have a lot of thoughts on it. I didn't want to get too jumbled. Was um, and you probably don't actually agree with this. Uh, he's just okay. That's and and I, maybe I wrote that uh, not by the end of the movie. Maybe in the initial performance when I was still kind of riding off the high of what was like. I thought of again a pretty strong introduction. He's got a good physical presence, which is not surprising. But this is definitely a role where it both benefits and is hurt by the fact that it's Conor McGregor. It benefits because we're giving him the benefit of the doubt. We're kind of like, it's his first movie. At least he's kind of being Connor, which is all he needs to be. But on the other hand, it's like, if, if this role was some other, if, if, let's say you didn't know who Conor McGregor was, and, and you just this was just some random actor, you would very much be like, who the hell is this person? How did they get this role? Because they are not good. Um, they're not good. He doesn't have enough natural charisma to just, to just be carried by that. Uh, I know we consider him to be one of the better talkers in MMA, one of the more memorable quotes, but you still have to have some sort bring some sort of actual charisma to acting. Uh, even if it's just reading line, even if you're not capturing the emotion, okay, maybe it's whatever. You don't expect to have capture the emotions of it. The script isn't great, but if you have charisma, you can take dialogue and make it you know more compelling than this he's not very good at it you're right the uh the adr the the automated dialogue replacement oh. is very noticeable it's very noticeable uh and for people who are asking oh, what the hell is adr the dubbing which i mean the dubbing the dubbing you know which so in that sense though i was almost like it kind of reminded me of an 80s action movie so it at, for at first it was working for me i was like yeah this is a very 80s action movie type performance so maybe that's if not on purpose, at least it worked out for them. But yes, I do not get the whole. Um, I'm not sure I'm, I'm down with the whole Conor McGregor saved this movie. He's the best part of the movie. I just did not. It was not a good performance at all. Let me say Basically. two things to that. Oh, okay. go ahead, Jed. Go ahead, Jed. Yeah, please. So the, the the first is the ADR is the second most noticeable part of the whole film to me. Uh, the first is the horrible CGI, which is all Oof. over the place and real bad. Um, and then like with the stories that came out about stuff happening, I was like, oh, okay, this was all really bad. And also used in places that didn't need to be. We'll get that. I've got notes on that for later. My issue is that this role ostensibly is Connor's be turned up to 11, right? But it's not. And that's why it fails for me among many other reasons. Like you nailed the point that I kind of kept circling back to as I was doing it is he... Conor McGregor is a very charismatic dude. And in that role, doing those things, all of that charisma is just not there because it's not the kind of charisma Conor has. Conor, Con, when Conor is the least charismatic is when he's being the most insane. Like when he's yelling at Josie Aldo and grabbing the belt, that's not charismatic. That's him being an asshole. When he is charismatic is when it's something off the cuff of, uh, who the fuck is that guy? Or you'll do nothing. Like those, those, those parts of him are charismatic. In defeat, he is very charismatic. I thought there was one instance of this movie that was able, that was really Connor getting to just be him turned up a little bit to the kind of character performance he always gives. And the rest of it is he is clearly trying to slide into a role that maybe has some hallmarks of what he is notorious for. But it just – it so badly missed the mark for me. I'll just throw this out right here. I think this film is substantially better. I mean for – obviously you would agree in general. Jake Gyllenhaal should be Knox. Jake Gyllenhaal is awful oh. as Dalton too. I want to be real clear bad. about that. And we have a section to talk about that as well. Jake Gyllenhaal would have been so <laughs> fucking good as Knox and Connor can't get over there for me. And so then it's, it's a huge hole in the movie 
because I honestly thought the movie was decent until he showed up. I think my most disappointing part about the Connor, I'm maybe I oversold it a bit. I was, <laughs> but um, I was just kind of disappointed in the writing in the sense of Connor that there was no for as for as big as a part he had in the movie because he's essentially the main villain for the whole second half of the movie. There was no real character change. It was the same character. I thought at some point we're gonna get some sort of plot twist or I don't know him and. Knox and Dalton would actually team up because because they're both hired. They're both just hired. That's for the sequel. Yeah, sequel. yeah, sequel. Sequel. Yeah. Sequel. Okay. Yeah. They're, because they're, I mean, he's just a hired hand, you know. So I was like, oh, maybe maybe Knox doesn't get paid because he's 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 just a mercenary. That's all he is. So um, I was kind of disappointed that there was no real, and there wasn't to me a chance for Knox, Conor McGregor, for his ca- character to develop. And um, I kind of I put the blame on the script rather than Connor. If, if that makes sense. Yeah. The, does, the script is I not totally good. agree. The, the, the script and is his not good. parts are really bad. Like his, yeah. he is not given anything to work with. To some extent, I am willing to believe that he was not given anything to work with because they saw what they were working with. And we're like, all right, we're going to pare this down to what we think he could do. Mm-hmm. I just, I think it was a fundamental miss on all aspects for him. But again, he's not an actor. <laughs> so like, it's yeah. fine. Again, but you hired, we'll, we'll but you talk, hired we'll, as an actor, and we're and I, we're seeing it from such a different view as MMA journalists, but as uh-huh. a, just someone turning on the turning on and watching the movie, he's just an actor. So I I wonder. I don't know. It's it's it's, it's hard to to me. It's hard to give an accurate opinion because I know who that guy is. So um, yeah, but the, also you, also think, you casted him because you know who he is too. Yeah, the script I is think, very bad. The script is very bad. Yeah. We'll talk about that. We'll definitely talk about that more when we get to our sort of subjective review at the end. It's uh, it's not good. It's it's and and frankly, a lot of the actors, I feel like they just don't know what to do with it. I I, I think uh, Jake Gyllenhaal is not great in this movie at all either. He's quite bad. Um, but again, there's not a lot to work with. Uh, Dan- Daniela Melchior and um, Jessica Williams, two of the the female actors, uh, the leads in the movie, are both wonderfully charming people. And even they are just kind of reduced to these to these meaningless characters, and, yeah. and that takes effort to take actors that are that talented and to like make them forgettable. That that takes hard work. So not a great script. Uh, Jed, did you want to say one more thing before I, I move on to a little more Jake Gyllenhaal talk? Uh, so this morning I I was working out and I always listen to podcasts. And I listened to the Big Pick Pod, which had a section on Roadhouse, and they all said what I thought immediately, which is like, yeah, Connor's awful in this. And I think that to Casey's point, it's harder for us to judge. And I, I feel like a lot of people looking at this are like, yeah, in the context of other MMA acting performances, which are largely all bad, uh, this is this isn't awful in comparison, right? Like I he is no worse than Gina Carano is in much, many things, or Randy Couture is, et cetera. He is just sort I was of thinking he, of Randy he, Couture, he, yeah. I'll say he doesn't elevate into like the higher tier of what I think are some good performances, but it, he's not like, I think he's the worst part of this movie, but it's not, he is not Chuck Liddell in acting and Chuck Liddell is horrible at acting in that regard. I think that there are just a lot of people who are grading it on the curve of Connor, the MMA fighter, which I think is fine. Like you're coming from this space, you know, that that's how you're, that's the lens you view it. But I think to your previous point, anyone who has no idea who Connor McGregor is, who, opens up Amazon Prime and flicks this on, they would just be like, what is this dude doing? And he is he is awful because there is, I want to be really clear for all of my criticisms of this film. I love bad movies. I think Beekeeper is the best movie of 2024 right now. But there is like just a world of difference between what Connor did in this movie and like what Jason Momoa does in Fast 10. And they are both driving at the same thing, but one of them gets there. And so it's like, can't be ridiculous fun. And the other one gets there and I'm like, I, I can see the seams and it it is very disassociating. Yes, I, I, I think we're all a little bit lower on cinematic debut than some of our peers or some people who have uh, praised the film. But... We don't want to delve to, I mean, we've done delved quite a bit in acting. So let's go on to, again, kind of the point of this podcast. We want to talk about the martial arts. So we don't need to go into, again, I thought Jake John Hall's performance acting-wise pretty bad. It's horrendous. But as a fighter, 
As a fighter, though, I thought Jake Gyllenhaal was pretty good. Um, the body language was never quite there. I never quite felt like, oh, this like this is a guy who has lived in the world of fighting. This is a real fighter. I did feel like, okay, Jake Gyllenhaal is acting like a fighter. He's acting like a tough guy. I did get that a, little, that a little bit. He certainly looked the part. I believe he reportedly ballooned up to 185 pounds-ish, so like the middleweight range to get uh, – and it ripped, a shredded, a shredded – I say ballooned up. I mean muscled, you know, muscled up. A shredded 185 pounds for this role. So he certainly looks the part. He's likable. And, and again, I thought he performed well uh, in the fight scenes from what we could see. There is a lot of computer graphics. There is a lot of quick cuts. There is a lot of, you know, hiding of what's actually going on in the fight scenes. But but I believed uh, – the parts where it's clearly Jake, I believed him as uh, someone who could get into a scrap and take care of himself. So I will. I am giving Jake a slight, like, a slight thumbs, maybe not all the way up, but definitely tilted upwards as far as uh, his fighting performance. Casey, I don't know. Were, were you convinced? Did you feel like – did you believe it? Do I believe him as a, a a professional high level fighter in that sense? I mean, I mean, did you that and also or, just did you enjoy watching him fight? Did you enjoy watching him play a fighter? Physic from from a physical and 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 choreography standpoint. Yes and no. Uh, there's, uh, I guess we'll talk about this later. But like, I enjoyed actually when there was some humor in the fighting. Like uh, when when he initially comes out and talks to the. When he first runs into the the goons in the parking lot, you know, and he right before he's about to fight, he asks them, you know, it's like, like, does everyone have health insurance here? Uh, you have good dental. Where's the closest hospital? <laughs> Twenty minutes, yeah, twenty five minutes. That stuff that was. Sounds- I think I think that was the actually the be- the best part of the movie. The best part of Dalton, that kind of um, comedic relief uh, before the fight, or even like when the the big end scene when he's fighting Knox and he gets his head slammed against the piano. He's like, hey, this piano's out of tune. You know, I like those kind of. I, that's why I felt the movie was at its best, and I think I think I, that's where I think Jake was at his best as an actor. But overall, I was kind of I wasn't blown away, but I wasn't like this sucks either. I was just kind of like, all right, you know, he got a paycheck, I guess. You, you you wanted a little bit to dip a little further into absurdity, and I think that's another issue all of us have with this movie. The, to- and, and, the tone and, and, is all we'll over talk, the place. I, I think we'll talk yeah. about that later. But the, it was the tone yeah. was the biggest issue. Oh, like there was the comedic everywhere. parts, but like if we would just gone all in on that, cool. But then we kind of do that. But then we also deal with the the real fact that you know, real quick, did he kill Jay Huron? I was confused. Yes, or did he just hit him late? Oh, was it the first I death in the octagon? I, I assumed happened? he either died or was like paralyzed or ended his career. They don't say explicitly, but clearly did something irrevocably bad. Okay. The assumption is the assumption. They don't say he killed they, they, He died? I did not assume death. I, I assumed he like paralyzed. Or some or something. serious sort of like injury. Yeah. So it was weird to, to kind of set that tone of violence can, can kill someone, like mm-hmm. in, in a, I don't know, in this unregulated sense. And then also kind of have this comedic, I get my head slammed on a piano. Hey, this piano's out of yeah. tune, LOL. You know, I don't know. It was just, so the tone was just off for a lot, it's a for, very, for me in a lot of way, a lot of ways. It's a very tricky tightrope that I do not think this film walked for at all in any graceful way. Uh, Jed, yeah. but let's, again, back to Jake, specifically Jake. Is he, a, is he a good fighter? It's tough. Uh, yes and no. Um, I, I think the slap fight, which is what I dubbed the, the first real fight of, of the movie. I thought that's, um, among the best parts of the film it is. And the parking and lot fight case, at the beginning. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay, the slap yeah. fight where he just okay, slaps yeah. him around a bunch. Yeah. Yeah. That was good. Um, the power, the power, the power slap advertisement. The power, the power <laughs> slap fight. Um, do you can see where they're trying to get? To with that sort of a fight and it it is good it, it's a fight i've never seen before i always love when you can show me something i've never seen before uh particularly in a fight scene it was something like that that is where gyllenhaal's charisma can kind of come out and and do most of its best work um and i thought that he is credible in that i don't i like you like you i think you've said this ak he didn't quite carry it right like and that's a real small nitpick. He he carried himself as a dude who is fit and large, and not like a dude who has been fighting his whole life. Like you, you if you've been at gyms, you've been around fighters. They they do sort of walk a little different. Not Conor McGregor puffed up constantly walking, but just like he <laughs> he didn't quite have that part to it. 
But obviously, he was absolutely jacked. That man was on all the gas and credit to him. Uh, and I thought that mostly he pulled off the fight scenes. I, fr- frankly, I thought he was much more convincing in that role than Connor was. Um, and I thought Connor was an okay physical actor in stages, but one of my major issues with his performance outside of the acting part is I do not, I don't think he's a credible heavy. It just didn't. He's, he's small man. And that's it. Like I, I was struck by this part of it, right? Because Patrick Swayze in the original and, um, uh, uh, Sam Elliott, they're not huge dudes, they come off, they work well in, in what they are because the way they are fighting fits them. Conor McGregor is straight up fighting like The Rock fights in movies. Conor McGregor is 170 pounds. He is not The Rock. And so when he's got five dudes holding him back and he headbutts one and then throws one off the arms, I'm just like, dude, I can see that they are all physically larger than you. This is, unless you are actual Captain America, a super soldier, this he he was not big enough to play the heavy in the way he played it. And I, again, I don't think that's necessarily a choice that he got to make. I think that's how it was given to him, but like he shouldn't, it shouldn't have been Connor's going to be the heavy bulk up on all the juice and get large and look big. It should have been like be lithe and limber because did anyone ever look at Bruce Lee and be like, that dude can't kick anyone's ass. No, they're like, he's jacked and look at, Look at the wiry little bastard. He's beating the shit out of people. Like that should have been where Connor was. And instead he was doing the Steven Seagal, the, like the power superhero. And it super missed the mark in all the bad ways for me. You could have played him up as this really like real street fair and, and had him fight his way out of that situation that way. I, again, I don't know. I don't want to get specific, but I'm sure there's a kid been gouging eyes. He could have been kicking, like punching groins, like, that would have been a little more oh, interesting, I, and certainly. No, in its I was own way I was okay with Connor overall, but I, actually, I, I do want to point yeah. that out too. I did actually. Lo- I thought Jake was a better on-screen fighter than Connor. Right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, which which yeah. I, I didn't actually. I didn't realize. I I thought that till we were talking about it now. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> and it's and and like so on-screen fighting is very it different. It's, it's that's so acting. different. It's, so, it's it's acting. Yeah. The man is five eight. Like they. When when they shoot Tom Cruise, they don't shoot him at a distance in a room full of eight dudes bigger than him because that's how movie making works. He is 5'8", and I don't care how big he got for the role. He is just not a credible heavy against 6'3 dudes. <laughs> like there is a dude in this movie that way outweighs him by probably twice the weight. And like I don't care that Connor is a good fighter like in real life. That's just not how this interaction would work. And it is it was so <laughs> disassociating for me. It was one of my biggest issues is the way they chose to make him fight when it they could have done so many more interesting things with him. Let's transition over, guys, to we've kind of discussed the different fight scenes and how the guys did in them. So let's look at these fight scenes. Uh before we go, what was, what was y'all's okay, favorite ahead, fight yeah. scene? I say, what was y'all's favorite fight scene in the movie? Because there were well, that's, there were that's what I wanted to get into. Oh, is that? Well, that's what I wanted to get into here. So I'm, yes, I'm getting into this. So let me get into the fight scene thing here. Yeah, yeah. So technically, to me, there was only, I mean, really the only two actual fight scenes. I I know you guys love the power slapping. Really, it was just the two fights with McGregor, I thought. Some of the other fights are either very brief or not really like what I would consider to be traditional fight scenes, like they're action scenes, maybe, but they're not really fights. So I thought there's really only two. I really thought just his fights with Connor were the two fights, but maybe I'm I'm being too specific here. How many, Casey? What what did you classify as fight scenes in this in this movie? Uh, there was the uh, the parking lot scene, the original wing. Yes, the, the op- that, yeah. that that the opening the fight. Scene. fight. Yeah, the fun scene. Fight. Uh, the post Malone one, but that doesn't involve the main characters. Yeah, um, but I'm not gonna count still that one. Scene. And then the it's still, still a fight scene. scene. Okay, yeah, still a fight scene. Um, I thought I, I actually. I know we're not going to talk very much about that, but I thought that was pretty weak <laughs> that, that, to, <laughs> to, 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 to start the movie like that. I was kind of like, Ugh. the movie did not start okay. good. The movie did not, that I don't know, it started weird. But, uh, uh, and then the actual, and, did they fight on the boat? They were, they, oh, I, they, were, they were fighting really. on the little, they, were, they fought on the little rubber, the little They the fought little on the raft. dinghy. They fought in the dinghy. There's a dinghy fight scene, and then they kind of went yeah. to the actual roadhouse final fight scene. Yeah. Um, 
So the question it, was the that, question that about, whole fight scene is kind of one fight one, scene. Yeah, they go, they go they go from boat to boat to roadhouse, <laughs> right? Is that how it works? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, which so the question is that was my, was my favorite fight scene? Yeah, well, well, no, it was how many do you think there? So there was what maybe oh. five actual fight scenes in the movie. Yeah. There were there were movie? action yeah. scenes like the truck scene there on, was the, on, the, on the on the bridge. Yes. Yes, um, yes, there was action. There was action. Um, this is like this is a two-hour movie, by the way. This is a, yeah. a little uh, close to two hours, maybe a little under, a little over, but around the two-hour mark. And it doesn't quite fill it up with as much action as I'd like. But yes, uh, what what was your favorite fight scene? I guess, Casey, uh, the, the slap scene the, uh, in the parking oh, lot. Yeah, yeah, because it was creative. Like um, the fact that because it, it, it to me because it established Dalton has such a superior calm fighter in this situation. He's there by himself versus four bad dudes or four or five bad dudes. And he can just knock him out with his hands and also make jokes and then take him to the hospital afterward. Yeah, you know, that's I, I, that's that was great. I thought that was – when I saw that scene, it's like, oh, we're in for a good movie. Because up to then, you know, we had, we had some weird patches and stuff. But I loved it. I loved that fight scene. I thought it was great. I thought it established the, car- the goons a little bit and, um, and the world we were in. So that was my favorite fight scene. Yeah, Jed, uh, do you agree with that? that? Or yeah, the, the first one. I, I think that was it's one of the best parts of the movie. I think there are a couple of other points of the film that jump out at me as like good things, but everything Casey said is right. It, I at the end of that scene, I was like, okay, I'm here. I, I it wasn't a strong start, but I thought that there were good signs to the start of it. I was like, okay, I see what they're going for. They maybe haven't pulled it off, but I see what we're attempting at here. And then that happened, and I was like, oh. They're going to get there. This is going to be good. And then because everyone had told me Connor's the best part, I was like, all right, this is going to be what I expected. Kind of campy, fun thing. Yeah. We don't quite get there. There are some other – all the other fight scenes are frankly forgettable. Um, there are some – maybe one or two moments in them of things that are interesting, but they're just generic bar brawls largely. Um, but this one stood out. It was uh, clearly – to me, this one just looked like the one they spent the most time on. This was the one most well thought out, most – most appropriately executed and just the most successful. And I, again, keep coming back to it. I don't think it's a coincidence that the best fight scene is when Connor's not in. I, I quite like the final fight scene of the movie, the, the climactic fight scene between Knox and interesting. Uh, tell and, tell and, us and why. Al- Alvin Dawson. So, uh, okay. So I prepared myself, I think early on the first time Jake, uh, I don't know if it's Jake, the first time there's a fight, it, there's actually like sort of a fight in the roadhouse we kind of get we 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 understand um, okay. There's going to be some CG here. There's going to be some camera trickery, some very zippy camera trickery to uh, tie things together and to not expose some of the actors as obviously not being fighters, not being stuntmen. Um, I, not, I don't want to get too film schooly here, but okay. So the 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 director of photography for this film is a man named uh, Henry Braham, uh, good cinematographer. He works with James Gunn a lot. I know people love James Gunn. So he's if you watch the last two Guardians of the Galaxy movies and uh, the Suicide Squad, the good one. Um, you would have seen his work, and and it's does and 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 now that I've said that to you, and you, if I'm sure people have seen the movies, be like, okay, I kind of got that same vibe. It's very very fast camera work, uh, tie, tying things together, uh, trying to hide some of the CG. The problem is those movies I just mentioned are big budget superhero movies. For a more grounded uh, street fighting movie like this, the CG is so ugly and so apparent and you just it just doesn't look good um and even though that was the case with this final fight scene where there is plenty again of weird cuts and cg and hiding of things i still thought at least like both guys got to show some of their stuff we'll talk about uh best moves in the movie in a moment both guys got to show their stuff i felt the tension of the scene uh i know again i know cg will take that uh, you know take that out for a lot of people I, I i was able to overlook it i was able to overlook it so your mileage will definitely vary when it comes to this final scene but i thought it was brutal i i felt there were stakes to the fight i i believe both guys were committed i i, I liked the final fight i thought they landed it it's not like one of my favorite climactic fight scenes of a movie i'll ever see I don't think the final fight sequence was bad, but when you were talking, what mm. stuck out, and I think maybe, it, like, basically, like Casey said earlier, I don't think I realized that this is why I liked it as much as I did until we started talking about it. Uh, there's mm. just not any CG in in the slap fight. 
it's a practical fight that happens. Right. And I'm not kidding. If you guys haven't seen the movie, congrats. I'm super happy you're with us and you've decided to, <laughs> to listen to us talk. Um, it, it is really bad. And like, I understand that there are a lot of, this happens a lot in, in films. You get touch-ups. These aren't touch-ups. Like there are just clear things that could have been done practically that they just said, YOLO, we're going to do this. That we're not talking about matrix revolutions where there's no practical way to get Keanu Reeves to stand sideways on a light pole in the ground and just running kick 800 clones <laughs> Of of th- of Mr. S- Agent Smith or whatever, like you can't practically do mm-hmm. that. You can practically have a f- a bar fight. <laughs> That's you don't need to do that. And then there are just pieces of it where it's so quick cut, it's so distracting. And that's I I honestly think that's why I like the slap fight so much. It was just it was well done. It was practical. Practical is just always better. Yeah, I, I, I hate to tell people, but I think those I think those Conor McGregor blast doubles were uh, CG enhanced. So maybe the technique wasn't quite as as perfect as uh, we want to. Give Even them if they're not for. CG I'm, enhanced, sorry, I hate to say they're, it. Enhanced. they're enhanced. Uh, just they're they're Conor McGregor enhanced. If if you're catching my drift. What, what, one Case issue I had with the the final fight scene is actually just motivation, in the sense that mm. I didn't really understand. I, it's just a movie. I have to like have feelings for these characters i didn't understand why knox was cared so much about this he first of all he murders the son of his the boss that hired him Uh, just ridiculous yes it's like he's a psycho he's a psycho he's a psycho yeah, but like I okay, but, but do you he's, think but, he's gonna get paid for murdering the boss? He just murdered the he, he just murdered the son. Like, I didn't get okay. it. Like that's why I was always waiting for this twist. Oh, like Knox secretly is trying to take over the business. He's right. not just a henchman. He's actually because he's not the he's not the big boss man. He's just a goon. He's just a hired hand. That's all he is in yes. this movie. Knox and, is he doesn't care about not, money. He he is he is essentially uh, Anton Shigurur from. But I didn't get that. Uh, set, no but but there, there wasn't no. an established. They didn't ever establish like who he was like does he have a code you know or anything like that, that that's no. kind of funny anton shakur in this movie would have been amazing the only person <laughs> alive who i and granted the film's been out three days who was like conor mcgregor <laughs> javier bardem same same same, same, same character yeah so I, I, I guess none, i had, I, I had issues with that at the yeah. end like i just didn't okay because like, because i'm kind of we've seen enough of Connor knocks on screen where like, okay, I'm over the novelty of this Connor McGregor. Now I, I actually, I need to care about the character and I just didn't care about the actual character and his, and his motivation um, from a, just a, a film standpoint. It just didn't make sense to me. It was, it was a fun, it was fun action. It was fun, you know, cool. You know, we're stabbing each other with chairs and stuff like the whole, Oh you no, know, the two, whatever. And the, the collar blade oh, where you got stabbed in the collarbone or something. That was cool. It looked violent, but yeah, I just um, the story. It, when there's no story to this action, it, everything just fe- started feeling really hollow toward the end. I'm less. On I, that. Um, I don't I want to care about the motivation. Go ahead, Chad. I was like, I just like the motivation isn't majorly like at this. This movie is what it is. Um, you know, as far as it is what goes, it is, but I still I was, have to care. I still have to because for me, well, I, but that's the thing. I don't have to care if it's good. Like, do I? care that much about hmm. like the motivations of john wick i do they killed his dog everyone must die but mostly it's just those are exceptional action set pieces and they rock this was just fine and so like i said i don't think it was bad it is just forgettable why don't they just kill alton like or what it was it ever explained why did they not just kill this guy why is there the constant strong arming why is there they were trying to why didn't they not just murder him well, the 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 son said, gun we can't just, just we just can't kill him like because that would look bad. I think, I think they why I think they're I think they were trying to establish <laughs> like we can't have a crime scene or something like like we have the cops bought but we can't buy a murder. I don't know. It wasn't it's, really established. Okay. That's, That's not the whole crazy. cop yeah, thing. Yeah, I is think dumb. that happens in another movie. Oh, the, uh, the cop thing was really no, oh the, the wrong the, the wrong cop, cop showed dumb. up. The wrong cop showed up. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, wrong the wrong cop thing is very stupid, but. They didn't yes. kill him because it's a film and there's, there's are plot holes and he has plot armor and that's okay because okay. that's just modern cinema. I mean, multiple times dudes had guns on him and then he walked up and got to do the cool nineties action hero. I'm not afraid of you pulling that gun. Cause I'm going to break your two fingers. Look, 
and it does it. Or the, the shotgun scene on the boat. It's look, that's not great filmmaking, but that is so ubiquitous <laughs> at this point in time okay. in movies that I I've stopped honestly caring that much about it. It's like, yeah, uh, but that I, that's the old that's the old Austin Powers joke. No, sure. I have a gun in my room. I'll go get it. Come back here. Boom. Shoot him. He's dead. <laughs> no, I got to put him out over, over a and, But that's a problem. Laser beam. That's the problem, though. Is this movie never even makes that kind of like joking attempt, like wink, winky. It's it, it just never – it's not funny enough to like pull off that kind of absurdity. And like I, I – just give me one line. Like 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 Casey said, maybe I missed it. That, that Yeah, yeah. They We don't want to get – other people too many police involved because if we kill this guy that's what will happen but then they burn down the girls and the dads uh uh the bookstore bookstore and the yeah store, and they say y'all are asking the and they say questions. the girl and dad were there why, like they, they, why are we trying to kill dalton them. dalton isn't the owner of the property they want and dalton is dalton they could just go kill her she doesn't have plot armor and magically the ability to break I fingers know. out of nowhere like they could have killed her. If, we wanna, if we're going to start interrogating this on the merits, this is going to be an eight-hour yeah. podcast, and yeah. it's going to be bad. Well, what what wowed you the most? What uh, single move or moment wowed you in this film? The best. Talk about my the fight. Favorite Talk about the move, fighting specifically. My favorite move was a very small uh, thing, just in one of maybe the first bar brawl. I, I'm, I don't exactly remember where, but there's just a moment. Um, and I think it's Connor, but it might have been Dalton. Might have been Knox, might have been Dalton, where a, he just throws a dude over him who gymnastics flips and then face plants into the bar like it, during the, the somersault. And I was like, <laughs> oh, that, that hurt. Um, that was easily the like the individually <laughs> coolest thing where I was like, I mean, that's obviously outlandish, but that's the thing. I don't care if things are outlandish if it's cool and it works. If it works in the movie, a lot of yeah. this stuff didn't get up get over but that one i was it, it was like a wwe vaulting him overhead and he does a 360 flip face Lands first the into the, the bar yeah i was like oh that, that was awesome yeah like, oh that hurts <laughs> yeah i was like that was cool not not yeah not something we're likely to see in the octagon or the smart cage anytime soon casey did you enjoy a more uh more traditional martial arts humor um the two um one move that really stuck out to me was uh, in the final fight scene when they flipped over into the bar bartender area, and then Connor throws yes. two punches and and uh, Dalton slips them and he punches the bottles on each side. I thought that was cute. It was fun. The glass blows up and oh, everything. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, I, like little things like that using the set. And um, I did like the little scene when we get the introduction to uh, to Knox when he comes in the bar and then he. Because one of the running jokes of the film, and I think this is the mod to the, the, the first film, was the band always playing during the bar fights. Yes. Like, no matter what, the band's yes. always playing. And I like when Connor actually rips open the the the, the, the fence a little bit and kind of sticks his head in there like he's going to attack the band for a moment. But they keep on playing. Like, boom, the guy's playing his bass, you know, doing their jam. So, I, I, you know, I mean, the more over the top it was, the better, I thought. Yeah. And, and, that, and I'm the, amazed this, goes this. Back to, this goes back to my other problem. Though I wanted this over yeah. the top because that was the best part of the film. But then you kind of – but you based the whole story on this kind of UFC fight where he killed someone and this – where violence was real, very real, and it had serious consequences. But then the whole movie is about like violence not really having real consequences. You're just kind of punching people up and goes, ow, and they keep going. So I don't know. By the way, let's talk about that UFC scene again real quick because I'm looking at the later sections. I don't know if we can really dig into it that much. And also, it has a great movement. The, the flying knee in that scene, I thought it looked pretty good, right? I think that was a pretty well sure. shot, believable flying knee. I thought it looked all right. It, definitely a good choice for a movie. Very, very picturesque looking move. Uh, it's a move men, millions are familiar with, but only thanks to you know Jorge Masvidal. Uh, so good, good looking move. And then uh, again, in the scene, he he clearly knocks Jay Heron out. Uh, what's his character's name again? Jet? Jax Harris. Jax Harris. Clearly knocks Jax Harris out and then does some ground and pound and then uh, a little too much ground and pound. And as we say, he either straight up kills him or at the very least ends his career, does some sort of uh, severe injury and, and uh, that he is haunted for, uh, by for the rest of, of his life. Um, Chris Fioni is the referee in that scene, if anyone's wondering. And the way they splice it together, again, it's hard to say because it never quite plays in sequence, but he, it looked like Chris was a little slow on that stoppage. Did you guys notice that? 
So my read is that he was <laughs> slow on the stoppage, but that he then stopped uh-huh. him, but then Dalton broke free he did. and went went Shrugs full him off. Yes, Balharis on him. Um, and yes. if we're if we've decided that this is a podcast, we're going to inspect the <laughs> credentials of the plot. I would like to know uh-huh. why Elwood Dalton is not in jail, because that would be the biggest plot hole to me ever. Um, not that, oh, well, here's the punishment for killing a dude. You're excommunicated and people like that's some real Dana White punishment. I live forever being known as the guy who murdered someone. Yes. But I actually well, face that, no one, real world repercussions. That's one reason why I don't think he died. Uh, I, one, I don't think he died. Two, doesn't do, I thought the UFC contract. He goes to jail that anyway if he's assaulted that, if he like that. Yeah, he probably. Yeah, but that was a lot. We don't know how many years in the past he probably did go to jail or something, right? That was a lot. That was. He was wearing venom years, gear, so the do past. the timeline. Though he was wearing, he was venom, wearing venom gear, so like, <laughs> he could, do the timeline. Well, this, ha- this only this, ha- this gauge. I'm saying, I know <laughs> we can. I think we can when assume. I, when I was watching this, I, the whole time I was thinking, what if this was at the apex? Would it be the same effect? Yeah, <laughs> I think we all can. I'm saying, <laughs> all I'm saying, guys, is if the UFC fighters. Had Elwood Dalton's lawyer, they wouldn't have been settling for three hundred and thirty million. Oh, wow. they would have gotten the whole oh, home. that man wow. should be in prison too right soon. now. Oh, too soon. I, I, again, too soon. don't too UFC soon. contracts have a clause though that if someone, you know, if you die in a fight, that is just like we're all as you know forgiven. Uh, yeah, no if you die no in a fight, not if you die right. after a fight has been stopped and you break free and physically uh, assault a man they to were, death. Chris do you still get, do you still vic- get your performance bonus though? I would hope you know, so. I, Chris Tyone I, was very slow. That's in my unanswerable there. He allowed, question. He allowed – Tyone allowed at least three or four like unanswered shots to a clearly unconscious Jay Heron in that scene. So Flash if you out. want to blame Elwood for that very last last shot, yeah, that last shot where he breaks away from Tyone, of course he deserves to be blamed. I definitely but want to blame Elwood for was, hitting the man. A lot of damage was done before that, and Chris Tyone got to get in there. You see that flying knee hit. I mean we've seen – Herb Dean would have would have that fight while while Jake Gyllenhaal was still in midair. So I I think Chris Tyone. I has just want to know. I just want to know is that without was El, El would ever the middleweight champ because he did win the fight. No. Well, like I mean, he won the fight. He won the fight. He undeniably won the, fight. won the fight. It wasn't a title. Afterwards, it wasn't a title fight. DQ. It wasn't a title. It was a title, fight. A title fight. No. It was for the middleweight title. Did they say? That? Yes, they absolutely did. Jay Huron is the middleweight champion of the world in this world. So, so Elwood, he is he was Ugh. the champion. Of course, I mean, they stripped him. They stripped him of the belt, but he was the champion. I mean, no, I, or, or was I it think, a DQ I, after the fact? I think you can do that as well. Oh fight. yeah, you, you can't get the win and get DQ'd absolutely. afterward, right? DQ'd, but there is DQ'd. a split never, second before that happens he not, where he's the middleweight champion that was, of the world. That was a listen. Listen, that was a successful Where, title defense for Jay Heron, and he he got his okay okay you know, win bonus. Ak ak ak. Even though we got DQ'd and Dalton murdered him after the fight, do you still uh-huh. put him above yeah. in the rankings? Because I would put Dalton above above Jay Heron yes. in the rankings. I would. Oh no, I, I would have no, to. No, it's a DQ. This but, this but would be a rankings fiasco a loss. for us. <laughs> a rankings fiasco. <laughs> <laughs> this would be a hell of a, of a American show. Up. <laughs> Let's just make this a rankings pod. Guys, I don't know what to do <laughs> this guy, with this. This guy may be. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Jay Heron may be, Jax may be dead, but he was putting it on Elwood, all right, before that stoppage. Okay, he was putting it on him. I mean, it was, it was a competitive fight. I'll give you that. It was competitive, but we had a definitive winner. <laughs> <laughs> Tyone should stop the fight when, when... I blame Tyone, honestly. When, I blame Tyone. I don't blame Elwood. Elwood. El, El, Elwood's El, moving up. El Elwood's... Are, are... I mean, I, I still have I Johnny Evelyn as number one middleweight in the world, but we're going UFC only. Yeah, yeah. D- uh, do you guys remember got, the footage? I got to stop the, this. The, do, you guys, do you guys remember the raw footage, the raw footage from the filming of the scene? I do. Yeah. That was on yeah. social media. It's it's literally Jake Gyllenhaal's hands are down by his sides, like gripping the fence as Jay Heron unloads on him. Just, just, yeah. <laughs> haymaker again, after haymaker. I'm like, you probably got to step in there. It's it's one of the really awful things about, and this isn't just MMA movies, like boxing mm-hmm. movies. They've just... Mm-hmm. They've never – the cinematic way to shoot boxing and MMA is not even remotely close to the real no. – it's just not a cinematic sport. It's it's the most cinematic sport in like the, the stories that combat tells, but it's not like – baseball and football are deeply cinematic. Like They're very easy to 
to accurately represent what is happening in the games. Mm -hmm. MMA mm -hmm. and boxing, they're just not because it's it's too nuanced in those portions of it. So again, I, that's part of the stuff that I was expecting. It's fine. I do think this entire conversation leads us into our next our next category, though. AK, do you? So wait, well, what were your? Hold on. Uh, the, though I do want to say, okay. So Casey, your favorite move again was the um, punching the was punching it? the uh, liquor bottles. Oh, you like that? So that sequence, Jed. Yeah. You liked. The front flip over the shoulders into uh -huh. uh, Which the bar. Was, that was that's a really good one. It was very it was dope. I, I, it was dope. I, I like. Give you that. I think it was. I think it was Dalton on Knox. I liked that he does like a flying side throw thing in the final. But there were some kind of cool throws in the final fight. So I, I was pretty impressed by that. Again, I, I doubt it was him. Just probably a blob of computer graphics. But you know what? That 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 blob deserves a round of applause. I say for pulling that move off. It was, it was kind of nice. Uh, yeah. So our next little bit we do have to touch upon. Uh, what was the most realistic moment, guys? And what was the most unrealistic oh. moment in this film? If you want to talk specifically about fights, that's great. But if you want to kind of deviate, especially since there's a lot of different kinds of action in this movie, uh, then by all means. First, first, uh, most realistic. What what came off as, what rang true? Ooh. Casey, you go. Oh, go ahead, but Casey. Most, but most realistic? <sighs> Sure. If, if you don't have it, one, you can move on. You can just go to. Uh, I mean, I mean, I, I, I'm just repeating myself. The most realistic would be the slap be beating up four <laughs> guys, a trained fighter beating up four men with slaps and just mm -hmm. a couple of tosses. I would actually, I would say that was the most realistic. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, are we going unrealistic? Because I have, I have a strong one for unrealistic. Let's. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Give me unrealistic now. Unrealistic, and actually, I had a big issue with this movie. He gets freaking stabbed with a knife. Correct. You don't, it's a knife in your gut. That's mm -hmm. pain don't hurt. That's where that's where all your poop is. He yep. opened up like that's bad. You don't just go, all right. Ugh. That was just unreal. I just I like I, I don't know. You get stabbed in the guts. you you are that's that's gonna mess you up for a very long time. I don't care how tough you are, it's a knife in the guts. I thought I just, I just Yeah, yeah, hey, great abs, yeah. But yeah, I just I was just kind of like no, you can't. You can't take a knife in the guts and just go. My bad. What, what the guy? You, you, you lost me five hundred bucks. I'm gonna stab you. And then like just, hmm. I just, I couldn't. That was too much of a, too much suspension of disbelief. Yeah, it's just too much for me at that moment. Damn, damn. Didn't. And that didn't was like, like the, the first five minutes of the stabbing. film too. That was the first was. five minutes. <laughs> Shut tough. Yeah. Shut tough. He was. <laughs> That was one of those Jen? things I think was a bit ridiculous, but I was willing to allow it. I was like, yeah, it's yeah. obviously dumb, but like if we're leaning into this, okay. And then they kind of didn't lean into that. And then like there were just other parts where Dalton is injured less, but hurts more. I was like, that feels different, but whatever. And, uh, and, I'm, st and I, I'm still, honestly, I know we didn't even talk about it. We don't need to talk about it. I'm still confused on the whole, the cop part where he hit the short-term memory, hitting the cop on the head of a log. That just kind of- Oh, that was it, hilarious. That's hilarious. That was a that was it's a, a whole <laughs> structurally bad, but okay. Scene. Terrible. I was like, are, was, are, 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 you, are, are you are we murdering are we murdering a crooked cop here? Because uh, cool, no. whatever. He's a bad he's a bad cop and he was gonna murder no. a cop. Okay. He's framing he a crooked cop for murder. <laughs> and and okay. it's and, and the most unbelievable like that whole scene. <laughs> that was just could, weird. That I, was bad. I feel like you cut so I want to remind people, this movie's almost two hours long. And at first it's actually moving really well. Like it moves really like he, he's like we meet him right at the beginning we understand he's a, ba a badass guy he needs money he goes to the roadhouse blah blah all this stuff happens it moves really well and then like there's all this filler in the middle and that scene is so pointless so i'll recap it real quick yes he's trying to frame a cop he's killed he has killed one of uh the big bad's henchmen punched him in the trachea uh, throw, good, straight up murdered throat him. punch yeah <laughs> straight up murdered him uh and then later he, and he he carries the body around so he, carry, he keeps the body at cold in carries ice it around in ice yeah we, we, there's a whole scene of him buying ice it's, like, it's, like <laughs> you could cut you could cut so much of this out it is bizarre and then yes he finds the cop who he knows is transporting money for this illicit uh, uh, uh cash exchange and then, yes, bonks him on the, takes him down, bonks him on the head, whatever, and says, oh, I'm going to, uh, shoots the body, puts four bullets in the body, which has been dead by this point for at least, I don't know, eight, like eight hours or something. There's no, <laughs> any, any self-respecting police officer, forensics person. Uh, no, like, that's what yeah, the ice is for, though. The ice okay. is, is fucking up the time yeah, of death. Yeah. I think they'd know. Oh, by the way, his trachea was also shattered. I have a feeling maybe the gunshot was yeah. 
Not after also, Lenny. there's not there's not gunpowder residue on the cop's hands. Obviously, it's, none of this yeah, passes scrutiny. It's so, the, 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 the cop himself says, they'll know you shot him. And he's like, yeah, but it, it'll confuse them. And I'm like, no, it won't. And then he goes on a whole bit about, ah, you know, I was a fighter. I now have concussion can mess with the short-term memory. And then he bonks the cop. And then the next scene is them cops finding him. And he's like, oh, I guess that trick didn't work. And I'm like, what in the, the hell was the point of all <laughs> and, and, and then what the boat. And, but, but he also, he also made the boat go off into nowhere yeah, too. Yeah. Like the, so the boat's just, what, what, what happened to this boat? Man, I don't know. <laughs> the, the, oh, the, the, boat is, the boat is intentionally destroyed. Obviously. Come on okay. guys. Keep up. Okay. <laughs> Look, Chad, go not, ahead. Not Where, did the, come from? Where did the dynamite come from? Where did the dynamite come from? I, Chad, I have been trying largely thing? not, I've been trying largely not to like knock this film on the basis of its realism because uh-huh. I think that that's just part and parcel of something like this. You sign up for that portion of this when you're doing a movie, and it's as uh-huh. long. I'm always of the opinion as long as the things make sense in the world that is built, it's okay. Yes. A lot of this doesn't. No. But again, what, what are we talking about? As far as my <laughs> most okay. my most realistic scene and my least realistic scene. Um, most realistic is really hard because almost all of them are not. <laughs> but the one thing I will say, and one of the things that I kind of wish, looking at this movie, I thought that there was a good movie in pieces in there, and it was just very poorly executed across the board. But like, I think that the backstory of Dalton is a compelling one, and like, yeah. I because when 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 you don't know who Dalton is, you're like, all right, he's clearly a former UFC fighter. We've gotten a couple of flashbacks. What drives a former UFC fighter to be doing this? And now he's going to this roadhouse out of nowhere. And there's not like it, in the same way the original set up that Dalton character in a little piecemeal fashion like this, and ultimately you get to the reveal where it is a little like you can understand his motivations. I thought that that is a good backstory. I don't think they executed a large portions of this well, but when they revealed it, it was like, oh, he killed Jay Huron, who actually was a good friend of his before they had a falling out and fought each other and he snapped and killed him. I was like, oh, I can see how that would like totally fuck you up as a human being. And like, then this is sort of the weird, sad path your life would go down. That would totally make sense to me. And I thought that that was a good piece that they frankly did not pay off in any meaningful way but i i like that so i'll put that here uh as for unrealistic i mean there are a thousand things the one thing i will say though and this is a bit of me nitpicking plotty stuff right um why is he so good at bouncing like In the original Roadhouse, Dalton is a world-renowned cooler, which this is a universe in which people know bouncers slash coolers and are like, oh, Dalton's great except for Wade. Wade's the best, but Dalton's one of the best bouncers in the world. I got to get him for this. Dalton's just a fighter who somehow has like – he's a UFC dude who now has the preternatural ability to be like, that guy's got a knife under his shirt. When he when he pulls it out, just take a step back and then punch him in the throat. Like, why is he so good at at a very different skill set than just fighting an individual man? That was very dumb to me, and so I'll put that here. Jed, do you remember? In that was dumb. Fa- yeah. I believe it was Fast Five when uh, Paul Walker asked Ludacris, "How did you get so good with all these computers and stuff?" And then the the answer is simply waved away by Ludacris saying, Plot armor? "I had a." I, no, he says, I had a life before you, Brian. And that's it. And it's never, it's never questioned <laughs> again. Uh, I will say that for this, for Elwood, for Elwood Dalton, that he had a why life before it, the UFC. Because he, listen, he had he a life before the UFC. He had a life before the UFC and he had a life between the UFC and the events of the beginning of this film. So uh, there's all kinds of training he could have, he could have undergone and, and, and had. But why, with. if he's so good at this, why isn't he already bouncing? Like he, that's a good steady line of work. He doesn't you want can, to fight people. He doesn't want to fight people, Jed. His he primary career path after the UFC is to get an unsanctioned bare knuckle. No, fist. No, 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 no. That's the trick. He never fights. He shows That's up and no one but fights. But if they try to fight a- him, he's going to have to fight. No they one does. never do. But I think, I, I think the implication is they never do. That That is established. And he's making $100. I will not have to question the plot there. That is established. 500. 
Five hundred. He's. I think it's like five hundred. I think it's like five hundred. That's what he got stabbed for. Five hundred. We've all been to smokers in the Midwest. You're not making five hundred. That's enough. There, you're making drinks at the bar for the night. That's how those events are paid out. Like he's not doing it. He has. This is a man with a set of skills, and he's not using them because I don't think he had to in his life. He just became the world's greatest bouncer. Jed, he's got fucking boat dreams. All right. Have you ever boat had dreams. boat dreams before? <laughs> boat tell dreams. Something. Boat I'll tell you something. Boat it, dreams. Just, it messes with you. If you can't you can't make these good career decisions that you're suggesting. All right. Would this film have, would this film have been better if it was called Boat Dreams instead of Roadhouse? I'm just I'm just Can we Yes. We need to touch upon that <laughs> very quickly that there's a there's a gag early on which does not land at all by the way where uh, the boat this character is like oh it's called the roadhouse oh get it it's just because it's called the roadhouse like what okay it's just uh, what's the joke and then she's like oh and then by the way he also named the boat and it's called the boat and I'm like this isn't funny not nothing about this is funny or compelling in any way I think they, they I just threw some know. dad jokes in there right there right at the beginning of the film I uh, genuinely uh, think my biggest issue with the film as a whole is it doesn't I don't know why it exists. It, and it doesn't seem to know why it exists because there is no, there's literally no reason that I can tell. And please tell me if you guys have, have a thought here, why it is called the roadhouse other than that bad joke, because in the original, the bar is called the double deuce. And they even make a reference to that. The, the supermarket store right next to the glass bookstore is called double deuce. Like So they do make a knowing reference to this, but there's no reason that that just can't be the Double Deuce Roadhouse. And like, hey, oh yeah, I've got a roadhouse in the Keys. It's called the Double Deuce. But they actively choose to go away from this. And I feel like they made that choice in a number of points in this film. And it makes the movie so much worse. Because to me, I don't know why... I don't know why this is a remake. Like... This story is not some cutting edge new story. They're even self-referential about it. It's just basically a classic Western trope of guy comes in and cleans up the ride in town. Like you could just do that. Like they've made a thousand different versions of Die Hard with different names. They have made uh, Heat in like eight different times, just called it different. Den of Thieves is almost a shot for shot remake of Heat and everyone loves it. You could just do that. You don't have to call this Roadhouse but then to call it Roadhouse, to know that you are attaching it, and to have a couple of vague winks at it, but to really not lean into that and be like, "Yeah, this is the double deuce." Like, well, why? I just don't know why that. Like, why we're doing any of those things? Another and stupid, another stupid joke was the whole. His name is Elwood, and then the the crooked sheriff was all like, "You know that song, yeah. a boy named Sue." Well, it's like what Sue's yeah. a girl's name. Elwood's not a girl. Yeah. Like, El- Elwood, <laughs> Elwood is a distinctly masculine name. Yeah. Like, what? I my only my. I was only like, guess what? It, doesn't, it just didn't make sense. Like, what are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I've never met a girl named Elwood. However, <laughs> is there a chance, guys, that this this uh, is uh, a oblique reference to the cinematic classic Legally Blonde? I was about to say uh, that's Legally Blonde, right? So yes, the main character that's, with the spoon is that's Elle de- Woods. Say it's El Wood. That is definitely what so, is happening here. I did again, not. I did not register that real time, but when you started saying uh-huh. Elwood, Elwood over, I was yes. like, oh yeah, that's Legally Blonde, right? Yeah, Elwood. and then I googled and it again, to make sure I wasn't like crazy. So this is a Legally Blonde remake. Chance, Let's, let, no, let's say by some chance that this is a legal. They're about the reference. same. Okay. Again, why? why, 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 why? I don't know why. Uh, so, Jed, that was your most un- Jed, that was your most unrealistic part, right? You that the just his. Yeah. Why was he not doing something else with his life and actually? No, it was just that. Why is he the world's best bouncer when he's never, oh, to our knowledge, no. never bounced? Because in the original, that's the whole thing with Dalton. He is the second best bouncer in the world. Sorry, yeah. cooler. Mm-hmm. Not bouncer. And so it's like, yeah, totally makes sense that he's kicks ass at this job. She just hired a fighter who like he doesn't come in and just fight dudes. He comes in and runs the bar. I was like, what's what's happening here? Why are you? And she came dreams? there and she remember she was originally wanted to hire post Malone. Yeah. Oh yeah. Was, yeah. That was the whole story. Like first she doesn't know what she's doing. She shouldn't be running a bar. No. I'm just gonna say that. No. <laughs> like, oh, I will also say for unrealistic, uh, there are several things that are like, uh, there's a reference to $25 UFC pay-per-views. That's oh, what obviously that? super unrealistic. <laughs> what uh, the hell was there's, that? That was unbelievable. I've made a note of it. I was like, 25 bucks a pop. That's insane. Uh, now, there's, when Dalton is driving, 
He does say quid, but I'm sorry. That's the, still the, not even the close. Pound, <laughs> the pound is functionally the same. Uh, when Dalton is driving away from the bar fight, there's just the UFC play-by-play broadcast on the radio. <laughs> Oh, okay. That so, was so awesome. That, I, actually, I, I, hold on. I want I, radio I, broadcast I, of fights. <laughs> I had <laughs> assumed that was boxing. I had assumed it was. It was boxing. boxing. It was boxing. Okay. I don't think oh, it was. I, I thought. I believe that there was because I was listening, and I'm fairly certain there was a a line about taking him down. Oh, okay. Well, either way, because I was I like, know. because when I heard it, I was like, surely this is boxing, right? No, and yeah. I this kept can't listening. Be MMA. I was like. But no, this is MMA. This is so dumb. Even if it was boxing, what boxing broadcasts are doing radio broadcasts now? Which is well, these days. I, yeah, I've been wanting. I've been wanting radio. Yeah, it's like she's in her. She's in a time machine. I don't know. It was. A, it was an odd choice. Some of the storytelling choice just bizarre. Uh, I'll very quickly say. Um, most realistic i like the explosion i like when he blew up the boat next to the other boat at the end and i'm like i was like whoa that's way too close and then it played out that way like he nearly like knocked <laughs> himself unconscious yeah Great everything bouncer, was not an explosions he, expert yeah. no not an explosions expert so that i thought was cool I'm like, oh yeah like, oh, i like the what? sinking boat I, I like the sinking no boat, the escape from the i thought that boat. was good i was talking about fire yeah. When when Billy Magnuson is like I've kidnapped the sheriff's daughter and he's on the oh, boat that was with so me. Weird. Like and I'm gonna like, kill what? her. I promise I'm not gonna kill her, but I'm definitely gonna kill her. Like having this, like what what is was, happening right now? The movie was just didn't make it any was. sense. The, okay, the last third of the movie just didn't make sense. Oh, okay, I mean, that, the, the more we're, the more we're saying this out loud, the more I'm like, God, God, what was I watching? <laughs> By the way, uh, shout shout out to uh, uh, the the quote unquote the corrupt sheriff, Big Dick, played by the great uh, Joaquin De Almeida, who uh, Dan, I'm sure you'll remember as the villain from Fast Five, uh, Jason Momoa's father, canonically in the Fast Furious series. Wait, we go back to Jed uh, talking about why yes. why 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 he was a, obviously a great bouncer, but he was also an, a a wep- I mean, a, an explosives expert. Like you're a he was not fighter. an expert. Whoa, whoa! But he was not an expert. He, was he, not an he expert. did a re, he did a remote. He he made a remote explosion. I don't. That's difficult. I don't think that yeah, that, you, it's it's not. You I just, think he was you just put a set trigger into it and you buy a wire. Yeah. It's it's not yeah, that. Yeah, he was okay. And no. he and he didn't even know how to do it properly. Remember, he, well, he, actually he had to like get it closer. It was like, he had a distance yeah. issue. I don't think that that was that. I, and again, if he was good with explosives, he wouldn't have put the boat friggin' right next to the other boat and he killed himself and everyone on. Why was Joaquin? Why was Joaquin Almeida? Uh, the Portuguese sheriff of this Florida key. I don't know. Town. Uh, I, don't, I was like, you're the, sh-. also, I, very strange. What <laughs> was his intro scene? That entire, do you guys remember this? His intro. Yeah. Scene I thought was it was going to be some, front, some, and yeah. they blurred his face for the whole time. Yeah. And when, I'm like, like, whoa, this very is going to be like, Rob- yeah. Yeah. And, and then it was like, like yeah, is there going to be Nero some big reveal? Or, and then no, they just Sam Elliott. getting out of the car. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, like oh, it's, they got Sam what's Elliott happening? In cameo. No. Why did we choose strange. any of the choices made right here? <laughs> very strange. Uh, very strange. Did not understand A lot of weird it. decisions uh, made. Yeah. This <laughs> and the, the unrealistic thing that bothered me, uh, not the fight <laughs> scenes, but man, uh, uh, Elwood – Dalton gets bounced around by vehicles a lot randomly in the movie, like just airborne CG. Jake oh, the Gyllenhaal, truck would have like, killed him. That was so weird. Yes, yeah, the very first time where he lands in the truck bed instead of just getting straight up like splattered by the truck driving, reversing into him at high speed. I think later there's a boat too. I think with the boat, I don't know if he gets hit or like, and he goes flying and it's like, oh, I'm fine. And I'm like, why are we doing what, uh, this? Why are you putting this in here? Billy Strange. Magnuson gets thrown from the boat onto the top of yeah. the roadhouse and survives. And he's like, so I'm, like, I'm good. He went like 30 feet or something. The physics in this world are a little, a little weird. A little and then he dies gentleman. because he gets, he, gets, he, gets, the, the, cause he gets his neck broken by yeah. uh, Connor. <laughs> not not, not gentlemen, thrown off a boat. All right. Let's uh, wrap it up. We have a category here that that's going to be a little more straightforward, I think, when we get into some other movies. For this one, uh, the category is, who would actually win in a real fight? Now, this works better, I think, when we're doing a martial arts movie and we're talking about two actors who are not, you know, UFC fighters cast in a role. Because I think we all know if Jake Gyllenhaal and Conor McGregor fought, probably would not go well for the Jake man. So, more importantly for this movie, we wanted to ask: uh, Let's say, <laughs> let's say Dalton uh, did not murder Jay Heron. I, I still not convinced that he actually murdered him. Uh, how would he do? How would he do in the UFC uh, post Roadhouse? Do you guys feel he learned something from his Roadhouse adventure? And that uh, maybe he'd get another shot at the middleweight title. And this time, this time win it all. Jed, what do you think? 
So I have three things that I'd like to say in this category, and then I'll throw it away. Please. The first is uh, I, Dalton. I, I think Dalton could do well. He's kind of a DDP-esque figure, um, except for okay. he does have the superpower of being invincible. So uh, if he can't feel any pain, I mean, Cheeto Vera just got a title fight. Uh, he got thumped up, but like you're you're going to be in a lot of fights by simply being impossible to to knock out so he you know i mean one he was the middleweight champion of the world however briefly that was uh so i think he could do okay certainly on the other side of this i also did it was like knox instead of conor mcgregor knox we don't know knox's pedigree but i mean we're talking about going toe-to-toe and more than holding your own with a man who at one time was the undisputed UFC middleweight champion, even if it was for mere moments. Uh, so, you know, if this guy has a background, great. If not, he's natural talent. Just get him in there. He can he can clearly sell the show. He'd do quite well. Uh, and then I also, just for the sake of it, I wanted to make sure we give a little bit of shout out here to my man Lucas Gage, uh, a.k.a. Billy the Bouncer, because that guy, that's the dark horse of the whole thing, boys. Billy... Billy is, really? is in there. He's learning. Billy's learning how to fight in there. Dalton looks at Billy one time, says, uh-huh. that guy's got a knife under his shirt. He pulls it out, swipes out. You take a step back, punch him in the throat. Billy executes yeah. immediately. This is a Francis Ngannou-like performance of wow. learning something backstage, <laughs> executing in the octagon moments later. This man is coachable. He wow. is young. He is athletic and talented. Give me six months of training with this dude, and we're taking him right to the top. I uh, did not see that coming. I was not particularly impressed by Billy. I, he he got Whoa, felled what? by one uh, golf, golf golf club to the rib cage, and I don't know. I like to see a it's little bit of to the rib cage. And, I mean, that should be training. That should be standard training in the future. Just Man's coachable. Taking shots to the ribs from a golf club. That, he can't yeah. take his coachable. Is he tough? Is he tough though? Uh, I was actually more impressed. I liked I liked Post Malone. I actually thought Carter oh, Ford. I thought Carter Ford. That's who impressed you, Post Malone. Listen, Carl he wouldn't even he wouldn't even straight. fight. He wouldn't even fight Dalton. What are you talking about? Because he fought. You know why? Because Dalton's a cheater. Car- Carter had taken out six guys. All he fought six guys before That's- before Dalton stepped up. Give me a fresh Carter Ford. Let me see what happens. Carter can we, can is, we talk has about how cardio, I think. What a bad system that is, by the way, to win the 500 yeah, bucks. You have to weird. fight eight dudes. Like, that seems tough. But suddenly, suddenly Dalton gets to win it because you don't fight him after already beating six dudes up. Doesn't seem reasonable yeah. to me. And it, it was not a fair system. So that's why I like Carter Ford. But on the other hand, that also makes me sound like, and he's definitely a UFC guy because they would love a guy who's like, oh, you're willing to fight six straight times in, in a row. For, fi- for no 500 bucks? <laughs> for five no, it's not even guaranteed. It's not even guaranteed. It's not, even, not guaranteed. even guaranteed. He's scared. Oh, no, no. Yeah, he's a, yeah, he's immediate signing. Yeah, yeah. He, he's scared <laughs> to compete. Billy's not scared to compete. Give me Billy any day of the week. Uh, this is an easy one then. Uh, we had a lot of critiques. Uh, what would you have changed to make it more believable, make it better? We can we can get I right have, to casting too. Ca- casting is part of this. If you want to get right into the casting solution edit, which I feel like you have some thoughts about that, you already suggested one making Jake Gyllenhaal the Knox character and maybe finding a different lead for uh, to play Dalton. Uh, what what else you got? Yeah, my three things that I would change. I mean, I would change a wholesale stuff. The biggest one to me is casting. I think everybody in this movie, except for Billy Magnuson and Arturo Castro, are. Uh, Miscast, basically. Arturo Castro is the uh, henchman who oh, – wow. he, He's a guy who was in Narcos. He's been a couple of things. You uh, might have seen him. He's the the affable henchman who gets his arm yes. broken and then just kind of exits. I, oh, he's great. He's so funny. I, I, thought he, I, I thought he was one of the good parts of the movie. Yeah. I thought he was Mike Bond. I thought – You him thought the Mike the, Bond was a Hispanic man? I thought he looked – I thought he was Mo. <laughs> We can That's, Mike Bond if you're out there. I thought that was you in Roadhouse. Mike Bond, I don't think you look anything camp. like Arturo Castro. I will. I will tweet about this later. Okay. <laughs> um, sure. Uh, him and Billy Magnuson uh, were the two. Uh, Billy Magnuson played Ben Brandt, the uh, I guess the bad guy, but not really. The bad guy of the movie is pretty clearly Connor. Um, he. Billy Magnuson is the only dude in this movie who I think understood the movie he was in. 
which is schlocky B movie nonsense because his whole oeuvre was that. And he does that really well. Um, I would have, I think I would love to watch this movie with Gyllenhaal as Knox. I think it would just work so much better because Gyllenhaal, Gyllenhaal is too shitty. Like that was my huge issue with his performance. We, he has such a smugness to his charisma and it is charismatic. You were drawn to him, mm-hmm. but it's not like, you haven't seen the original AK, but Patrick Swayze's charisma, you have seen other movies. There's not a hint of, of smugness. And I'm not saying this needs to be a shot for shot remake of that movie, but to be this kind of character c- carrying the center and the emotional center, there being like a smug shittiness to it is like, actually that would just work so much better as Knox as the smug shit eating heavy who we kind of would like to hate to like, like it's, it, it just would have, and he, and he can get to be weird. Cause that's the other thing. Jake Gyllenhaal likes to do weird stuff. And that kind of doesn't work when you're carrying what is ostensibly a not weird movie. And so I think he was just deeply miscast as basically was the rest of this film. I don't, <clears throat> I honestly don't know who I would put in the Dalton role though. It's hard to like think of a dude for that, um, to play what, that what as about well. What about you go Rousey, Rousey so, and Hall? I don't think you can do that. You could do like a, like Hemsworth like has, but his, again, he's a little smirking charisma too, though he can dial that back a little bit more. I think, um, I did think while watching this, I was like, I kind of wish we'd gotten the Rousey version. I think the Rousey version would have been a wholesale worse movie because she is a worse actor than Connor is. But I think it might have been so bad that it would have leaned into good. Whereas this movie was doing enough holding on to the good parts of it to just be a bad movie. Um, Which is one of my other things that like my other biggest criticism, if I could change anything other than the casting, if I could just go in and give Doug Lyman notes, I've been like, Hey man, <clears throat> this is a roadhouse movie. Let's, let's be a roadhouse movie. Like call back to roadhouse. They had certain homages and, and certain things that were like, Oh, that's, that's the, this character from the former movie. But the fact that in this film, there is, there is not the line uttered. I used to fuck guys like you in prison is a travesty. <laughs> That's the oh. most like notable line from the original movie. And there's no re like Connor could have delivered the shit out of that line. There's no reason that Connor didn't get, I used to fuck guys like you in prison. And one that actually gives us more backstory than we got for Connor's character the whole time, basically on one line. Um, they, pain don't hurt like that was an easy line to throw in that they should have put in and i the whole movie i was like here's what's going to happen at the end of it connor's going to get dead and he's going to get dead because dalton's going to rip out his trachea because that's what dalton does in the original i was like he's gonna rip out his trachea and it's gonna be like oh shit he did it you see the original yeah and then no that's not what happens at all and i guess they call back to it with the The broken trachea punch but it's so weak like just know your audience and if this is a roadhouse movie be a roadhouse movie and and lean into those parts of it have conor mcgregor stare dalton down when he's being held back by five dudes and be like you'll do fucking nothing you'll do fucking nothing like how how is none of that in this film all the joyous parts that were so obvious to me I would inject them in and make this movie so much better. We've had a lot of problems with the script. Uh, sure, at least one line jumped out at you guys. We want to talk best, f- hopefully fighting related quote. Again, this is something we want to find in an MMA movie when we're doing cinema. Uh, what line jumped? So I likely no one ever wins a fight line. I did not know that was from the original. So I feel like that's disqualified. So what was uh, an original line from this movie? If anything, from this movie can be considered original that you guys liked. Casey, did did you write one down? Uh, the best line I like I liked about the uh, the hot the hot the distance to the hospital. The twenty Wait, minutes. The 20 okay, minutes yes. That, yeah, yeah. I, I like that. Yeah, the reference is gag. And and they missed the best joke of the movie when Dalton went to the bookstore and in the he couldn't find the young girl and the cop goes, "Oh, she went to the hospital." And then he kind of, and that was the perfect chance to go. It's only twenty that. minutes away. No, but, I, mean, I didn't think about that, but okay. That, that was the great. Oh, that was again, the, that's probably something they should have thought of. 
By the and, and by the way, uh, the girl was like, I like how they show her out of the hospital. She's like lightly burned on one cheek, and I'm like, oh, okay, this was a serious. Yeah, no like, stakes. Yeah. There are no uh, stakes for the heroes of this. Jed, film. Jed, what did you like? What uh, what what uh, line of scripture touched your heart? So I, a, I have a bunch of things I'm only like written down because um, there are honestly some okay lines in here. I'm only going to mention two things. One, and this is just a very brief throwaway, I thought it was truly incredible to have Conor McGregor with the Tupac Thug Life tattoo of Knox, 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 his name three times. Oh, yeah. Oh, also oh a that's Knox what that is? Gold chain. Yeah, it is Knox, 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 like, like Tupac's Thug Life. And he's wearing Knox on a gold chain. I was like, that's an incredible bit of of artistic work there by the costume director. Okay. Tremendous. Uh, but I think there is there was one line that very clearly jumped out at me as like actually good and what they are trying for. And coincidentally, it's Connor that says it. And I think that this is the one time that Connor really fulfilled his obligation to this film like appropriately and, and landed it. And it uh it, it was very simple it's at the end of their f- the fight between connor and dalton first and they are it is after the the blast double and they are s- standing at uh across from each other um outside of the roadhouse and connor says to him um there's something wrong with you me too and i was like that's that's good like that is good writing delivered well and uh, if the rest of the movie was closer to this, because that's not like it's it's a fun line and it's a line that sort of explains what's happening without being like, hey, this is a Western. You're coming into town like, without being overt, but it is also explaining like, hey, there's here are the motivations for these two dudes. They're a little bit broken inside and that's where this is going. So that was the clear choice for me. Yeah, that I had that line written down for sure. Very good line, like I said, good delivery, and it stands out so much amongst the sea of mediocrity. And if the, there had been more of that in the movie, it would have been elevated considerably. Uh, so I like that line a lot. The other mm-hmm. one I had was uh, when they're fighting in the little boat, and then he goes, "Ah, our own little octagon." Who taught you shapes? And then it's a round yeah. like oh, who, <laughs> who taught, taught you shapes? So that was that was a funny line. But I think yeah. that if we're going fighting related, like. There's no like when we say fighting related, we're trying to find like a like again, Fast and Furious driving related quote. I live my life a quarter mile at a time. Like that's a driving related quote. So I do think if you're going fighting related, it's the there's something wrong with you, me too. Um, other than again, the line from the original, no one ever wins a fight. So that so yeah, this, there was just these flashes, guys, these flashes of inspiration in the sea and of that, nonsense. Um and, and the, th- the ahead, thing Jeff. about that one, AK, is just like that to me is what they should have been trying to do. With Connor. Connor is a cartoon, but he is not like he he's not the Knox cartoon. He like, but that line, like, I'm a little bit crazy and this is who I am. Like, that is the persona Connor has given off for his entire career. Not I'm full-blown insane and a sociopath, and I'm driving in a student driver car and drinking eight pineapple or uh, eight drinks out of coconuts and just being a lunatic coconuts. like no he's he's not the joker and like it was so clearly like he's trying to be keith ledger's joker that that's not it but he is a little off and i think that they really should just lean into that because that's why he delivered that line well because that is his wheelhouse and i think the rest of it felt like it should be his wheelhouse but was just demonstrably not to me Let's move on, guys. It's time for what we're going to call the final fist. This is where uh, we will actually review the movie. By now, I think you guys have some pretty firm idea of what we liked, what we didn't like, what we would have changed. We've kind of gone over it. So we don't need to have a full-on recap of our thoughts on the movie. I don't know if you guys just do a reveal. Do you want to do a big reveal, drum roll, uh, and then show how many fists we're giving it? Uh, Each of us are responsible for up to... Uh, two fists of ranking so a movie can get uh, i guess a six fist i guess would be the top from zero the rating goes from zero to six so uh assuming my wi-fi holds up (laughs) we can do a trip map yes okay so do you guys want to reveal or do you want to get some final thoughts first i think reveal and then i think you have to show your rating and then explain yourself yeah I, i i agree all right all right gentlemen i count what do you want yeah i think we got to yeah, I think you count it off to three, and then we raise our fists. 
<laughs> put up your okay. put up your dukes, boys. We're gonna go one, two, three. Wait, wait, one, two, three, and then this, they're gonna say this is, this is audio too, guys. <laughs> Well, we can explain. Oh, after well, we're going to oh, okay. say it after. Yeah. All right. Yes. All right. I, I will say how many. Put up I'm going to put mine up Muay Thai style. Okay. Mm. okay. One, two, three, and then go on fight. <laughs> sure. Whatever works. Okay. One, two, three, fight. All right. For those of you listening, wait, wait. We have a total of one fist. Uh, uh jen and i people watching in video might be wondering oh did they mess up their cue why are jed and ak's fists not up uh no that's intentional uh i am not raising a fist uh casey's giving it one so one fist it is uh, coming from e casey Leiden. i i did not enjoy this movie uh it's it's a bad movie it's not so bad it's funny it's just boring uh script not good the performances are to the level of the script i mean it's just it's bad it's uh, it's not interesting it's too long you could easily cut 15 20 probably 30 minutes of this movie and nothing would be lost if anything it'd be greatly improved that's not just this movie that's a modern movie problem in general but this movie falls right in line with that the tone is all over the place the action i thought the action actually was pretty good but there's not really enough of it and Again, I really enjoyed it a lot because I cared for the character. I cared for uh, L. Dalton, I cared for uh, his his what he uh, has. If you don't care about the characters, this can be a rough watch. If you don't care Conor McGregor, it's really going to be a rough watch. He's not even that good in it. So, I'm sorry, guys. I had no fists. Jed? Yeah, I gave it zero fists because it's not a good movie. Um, if you enjoyed it, I think that that's reasonable, right? I don't think that this is just... Like Argyle is a movie that can't be enjoyed. It's the worst film I've seen in quite some time. Madam Web, the same. I, this is certainly not on that tier. Um, and so I almost considered giving it a fist, but since this is new, I didn't really know how to go about it because there are parts of it that are good, but ultimately it fails across the board. My my sort of one sentence review of this movie is that it's it's a bad movie that could have been great, if you changed almost everything about it because it's not that far off, but it is like Doug, Doug Lyman does have a bit of a history of having some, some jumble in his movies. And this one really comes to the forefront in ways that I found pretty hard to, to take. I thought this movie was really good. No, not really good, but I thought this movie was good in the first phase of it. It was a little dumb, but when Dalton comes to the roadhouse and it's Jake Gyllenhaal being charismatic with a cast of characters who are quality actors, like they have a pretty good cast in this film, honestly. That that part is working. The music in this movie rocks. Like them just cleaning up the double deuce is is solid stuff. And then Connor comes in and the tone shifts and it shifts poorly. And again, I honestly don't think that's Connor's fault. I think he's deeply misused in this. And so it's not his fault that the movie comes from being of obvious Roadhouse remake and quieter but fairly enjoyable for what it is to Fast 18, which is kind of how it is at the end. It, it's jumbled and awful and bad, and the performances aren't great across the board, and most people are miscast, and the writing's poor, and there's way too much CGI. So I'll be honest, I was super disappointed because I went in – I came into this thinking I was going to enjoy it because I like bad movies. Like I, I love the beekeeper. I like sort of schlocky nonsense movies and it's just couldn't quite get there again. It wasn't awful. So maybe it actually deserved a fist. Like it's possible. I should have fisted this. Right. But do you, it's, do you it's not going to get to want to change. Yeah. I'm going to retroactively change. Cause I also okay. do think as I'm kind of thinking okay. in the context of other films, right that we're going to be doing. A lot of them are going to have similar issues. If I could half a fist, um, if I had open palm, I think that's where I'd go with it. Right. Because <laughs> There are parts that are good, right? There are parts of this that, that could have been built better. It's just not executed that well. And so it ultimately fails, but also I didn't have an awful time watching it. Like it, I didn't sit there and be like, this movie is the worst movie I've ever seen. And I hate it. I was like, this is a little too long. And, um, a lot of it's bad, but okay. So uh, a half a fist, if I can give one of those, is, is where I would settle. Uh, if you've got two hours, sure, why not?
but don't expect greatness. Oh, I, I don't know. It's, it's nowhere near the worst movie I've seen in the last probably like two years. It's not, it, it, you're right, it's not atrocious, but atrocious almost would have been more interesting than what happened here. I don't know. Well, Casey, get, justify, it would be, but that, justify the That's answer. my issue, AK, is in my judging, I was like, as I was talking through, I was like, if I give this zero, that feels like giving it giving it one feels wrong because there are other movies that I will like better that also get a fist from me. But also giving it zero is going to put it on par with some really bad films, and I don't think it deserves that. So half a fist. Mm. Half a Interesting. fist. Interesting. Yes, it's it's hard when we don't quite have a gauge. Uh, Casey, <laughs> justify your – you're pretty quick to give it a fist. What – what's uh, I didn't explain that. <sighs> okay, so – one fist only because I want to give a half a fist and I'm being positive. So I'm rounding up essentially. I'm rounding up to a, to a one fist. Definitely not a, okay. definitely not a two fist movie. Um, yeah. Just two fist movie is what I would think. I want my friends to see this one fist movie is if you got nothing to do much like a UFC apex card, go ahead and watch it. Sure. You know, um, I like that. <laughs> um, and I did have low expectations. Maybe this is the difference between me and Jed. I had low expectations coming into this. Um, I am actually not a giant fan of the original Roadhouse. I granted there are funny lines in it. Um, the the premise is good, you know, Patrick Swayze's Patrick Swayze, you know, so it's it's a very nostalgic film, but it wasn't a film that I, I was like, oh, I love Roadhouse. It was just, you know, a, a good film. I get why people like it. And so I wasn't crazy about the remake and everything, but I sat through two hours. Yes, I had lots of issues with the tone in the movie. Um, the fight scenes didn't necessarily blow me away. Um, if you want cool fight scenes, go watch The Raid. Go watch Ong Bak, you know, for good MMA-ish kind of fight scenes. Um, but what actually what gave me the fist was the comedy in the movie. I thought the tone of the comedy for lots of the movie, especially uh, what's the actor, uh, Arturo Castro, I think it was great. I wish it was. I wish it was more comic, comedic comedy in the movie like that. Um, but yeah, it was in the end. It was forgettable. And um, but I didn't regret the two hours I put into it. So that's why it gets one fist for me. That's a good I argument. I'm up to a fist. I'm up to a fist. It's a two. It's if a two I, fist. If movie. I didn't have this podcast. <laughs> If I had to do this podcast, I could so see this never having watched this movie. Uh, and, 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 and again, that doesn't mean it's like the worst movie ever. It just was so profoundly uninteresting. And I don't know. Could have used the edit. This movie could have been saved in the editing. I am telling you. There's, you know what? There's a decent movie in there somewhere. But this isn't that movie. And so I will not give it a fist just based on uh, based on potential. But two out of six, that's not bad. And it's certainly more than good enough, guys, to put it at the top of what will be our ongoing uh, MMA movie rankings. Uh, yes, I want people to know that uh, one other reason we're doing this show is we want to decide, we want to find out what is the greatest MMA movie of all time. So you got to just start from, you can look at other people's lists. We could go from our, we could all go like, oh, this is my top five. This is my top five. No, 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 no. Let's tackle this all together, guys. Come to the, on this journey with us. Let's all watch these movies together and let's go one by one. St completely blank list. <laughs> we add one movie every time we do an episode. Right now, we are adding Roadhouse to an empty list. So Roadhouse currently with its two out of six rating is the greatest MMA related movie of all time. Okay. Uh, this will change. We do plan to do, uh, we should tell people we are planning to do a six episode first season. So this will be a list of six movies by the time we're all said and done over the next few months. And uh, hopefully we'll have some idea. Of, next again, few what, weeks. <laughs> next few weeks of uh, what makes a great MMA movie. What will it take to take that number one spot and hold on to it. Uh, we will see, but we will be adding to the list next week, guys. Uh, please join us uh, in watching Fight Valley, the 2016 action film of Fight Valley, which you may have heard of. You're probably confusing with some other movies, but this is the one starring, uh, I don't mean not starring, featuring Misha Tate, Chris Cyborg, Amanda Serrano, Holly Holm, and Caitlin Chukagi, and now Caitlin Sir, Sir excuse me, Caitlin uh what is her name Terminara. <laughs> Terminara. thank you so much i apologize caitlin caitlin chicky and now caitlin Terminara. so uh star studded a lot of I, we only gave you conor mcgregor and apparently supposedly michael chandler in this week's offering but next week we'll have plenty of uh ufc fighters featured in this film thank you everyone for joining us for the first episode i know it's a little bumpy guys a little bumpy 
uh, as these things are when you're starting off. But I hope that you enjoyed our insights. Uh, I hope that you, I hope you guys had a better time watching Roadhouse than I did. And uh, I look forward to discussing more MMA movies with you all in the future. Uh, remember, this is cinema, guys. There's no wrong answers when you're talking about it. And uh, we will see you. We will see you down the aisle next time. I can't, can't wait for you to watch the, the old Roadhouse now. Oh, I should, eh? I probably should, eh? <laughs>